Matt James wipes The Bachelor from his Instagram. I think maybe, yeah, it's just his way of moving on. Like, it is yeah. what it is. It happened. He knows he helped, you know, spark some change. He didn't necessarily want it to go this way, but he's just taking it for what it is, and he doesn't want to be known as The Bachelor anymore, right. I guess. We meet Katie Thurston's men, which include Bachelor Nation's Clay Harbor's cousin. I wouldn't want to go on Katie's season because uh, um, my cousin will be will be there. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Blake Hortzman gives an update on Kelly Flanagan and Peter Weber's split. Very rarely do you break up and never talk to that person again, never see that person again. So I think if you look, step back and look at it like as a normal relationship, like of course they're gonna see each other again and they still care about each other. You can't just turn that off. Plus, Bachelor Nation Sydney Latuaco recalls Colton Underwood playing favorites. And I felt he is very conscious of like how he's going to be portrayed, which is a great thing to do as Aaliyah, like you're protecting yourself in a way. And I think because of that, a lot of the relationships didn't move forward because he was just being so like cognizant of that. Um, so then, yeah, people left for their own reasons, but I think that had a lot to do with it for sure. We've got that plus so much more on today's Here for the Right Reasons. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly Associate Editor, Sarah Heron. Sarah, hi, welcome. We are back. <laughs> we are back. The Bachelor is not back quite yet, but we are back to ke catch you up on everything you missed and everything else that's going on in Bachelor Nation. Yes, we have a lot to guess you actually, even though, like you said, The Bachelor is quiet on our TVs, there is still a lot of news. So we're going to break it all down in our bracket of roses and kick it off. This, this was a big story last week with Matt James returning to Instagram, but wiping The Bachelor completely clean. It's almost like it never happened. I mean, it, this says it all, right? He First, he Seem seemingly archived everything from his page, wiped everything clean. Then he brought it all back, but deleted every photo from the show. Like that is telling. Yes, that is a statement <laughs> if I've never seen one. I mean, do we really think that he just wants to kind of forget this ever happened? Because it definitely seems like it. I mean, he's been done a few interviews, very select, mm -hmm. and he's consistent that he doesn't regret doing the show, but I think maybe, yeah, it's just his way of moving on. Like, it is yeah. what it is. It happened. He knows he helped, you know, spark some change. He didn't necessarily want it to go this way, but he's just taking it for what it is, and he doesn't want to be known as The Bachelor anymore, right. I guess. Yeah, definitely doesn't want to be known as The Bachelor. The only thing that he kind of left in there referencing The, the Bachelor was his statement regarding Rachel Lindsay, right? Yes, and mm -hmm. Rachel Kirkinell and Chris Harrison, and I think it's just he's, I, I don't know, his brother said he's doing okay. We have seen we saw him out at that UFC fight in the background with Courtney and Travis Barker, which was Love hilarious. It. So he's <laughs> talked about he's living his life. It's not like he's been hiding, which is good, because that's not healthy. But yeah, I think he just doesn't want to be associated with The Bachelor right no, now. But I'm safe to say he will not be on Paradise. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think we're going to see Matt James on any reality television shows, especially dating ones. Maybe like The Challenge, if he's yes. feeling crazy down the line. <laughs> I could totally see him on The Challenge. I think he would do very well. But... Yeah, and he would definitely rule out all showmances. <laughs> <laughs> totally, that is done. The Countdown to Katie's season is on. She's going to be handing out roses. And ABC recently released the 31 contestants vying for Katie's heart. Yes. What did we think? of this this new thing of them putting out the potential contestants and then kind of taking them away from us is also weird it's also very weird i mean they what they give us 31 new men looking at them now i mean it's hard to tell from these pictures because they all look the same <laughs> and you know and we don't really know what their occupation is and that's always kind of fun to look at but you know what i do like is that there's not like any 22 and 23 year olds it's more like mid 20s to mid 30s so maybe these guys are a little bit more mature and ready for a relationship rather than matt season when everybody was just looking for some drama Two things stood out to me. One, 26. The number 26. Yes. Yes. Were. All of them are 26, which they whatever. Are. Are. Get Katie's, I think, 30 or 29. So that's mm -hmm. not a crazy thing. But the other thing that stood out to me was hair. There yes. was a lot of hair. A lot of hair. A lot of hair. We saw a lot of hair. A lot of guys from New Jersey, too, which, yes. you know, from New Jersey, so represent. But um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. We still don't know exactly timeline of when The Bachelor is going to premiere, right? We haven't heard that yet. 
No, I'm here. I saw rumors of the first week in June, which okay. would be a little late. It's usually end of May. Yeah. But I mm-hmm. think that they, they're in New Mexico. They're filming or they've been in quarantine. But like Tasha and Caitlin, who we know are hosting, are still very much been on their phones. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of unclear when the camera officially started rolling. Usually we'll get maybe a, a photo or something yeah. after the first, for first impression rose or a tweet from like Rob Mills or something. Mm-hmm. But I feel like The Bachelor is trying to keep everything on the down low after the dealing with all the fallout of everything. Yes. From there is There are rumors that they are filming in New Mexico. Did I make that up? Yeah, New Mexico. Okay, so yeah, so we'll have to wait and we'll have to wait and see. You know, like you said, end of May, beginning of June, and then hopefully we'll get Paradise and then Michelle season of The Bachelorette come fall. So we are not getting any Bachelor breaks. <laughs> no, we're not. And what's so interesting is these Bachelor Nation ties. So even though we mm-hmm. don't really know much about these guys, we've kind of found out the sleuths on the internet have figured out that we they're familiar faces in some way, right? Totally, yes. So Andrew S., who is going to be competing on Katie's season, um, he may have gotten some inside pointers from his cousin, Clay Harbor. Of course, he was on Becca Kufrin's season, and we recently caught up with Clay about the advice that he gave his cousin before heading on the show. Take a look. I wouldn't want to go on Katie's season because uh, um, my cousin will be, will be there. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Oh, really? Your cousin's going to be on the show? He is. Did you give him any advice? Yeah, I gave him a lot of advice. He's hilarious. And I just told him to be himself, uh, make her laugh and, you know, just go out there and have fun. It's a cool experience. And, you know, just try to be as open as possible because it's such a fast process. You got to kind of wear your heart on your sleeve a little more than you would in, in the real world. And uh, be yourself, make her laugh, but you know, you got to be open. I mean, you know, get some advice for somebody that has already been through it. So good for him. It's so interesting. They also had two guys that they thought they were going to have on Claire's season and they brought them back. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a full breakdown on the site of there's one other one. I think it's um, someone was friends with Ed from Claire Tasha's season, like kind of random. And Chris Bukowski recently told one of our reporters that this show used to shy away from people who knew each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but now they're leaning into it. And I, I, I can't decide if that's a good or bad thing. I can't decide either. Yes. I don't know. So again, like we'll, we'll have to see. So Clay has given him some pointers. We have some ties to the Bachelor Nation, which always makes it a little bit more fun because maybe they can bring some of these guys on too. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's always good to get a little behind the scenes. So I love the casting. And now if it's friends of friends, I guess it's the new way to get on. You got to know exactly. somebody. Exactly. You got to know someone. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, we have to, we have to catch up on our, one of our favorite couples, Claire and Dale, back together, but keeping things private on social media. We know that they rang in Claire's 40th birthday in Napa together, shared some snap from the same location, but didn't post for any photos, weren't super lovey. What do we think's going on here? I don't know. I think that they maybe they were so obviously, well, I mean, the relationship started as a public relationship, but after the show, they were so much about showing PDA on social media. And then maybe she just feels like we have to keep things private until we really figure out what is going on between us. This is going to sound maybe not so nice. (laughs) I'm a little worried that Claire is falling, is still very much in love with Dale, and he is maybe feeling it out and not ready to commit, like Tales all this time, Mm -hmm. and she's going to get her heart broken again. I do And this is pure speculation. I mean, we had some sources saying he's being very coy about what their status is, and as two people who were engaged at one point, I feel like this is a bad path. I do too. And I, I feel like he got a lot of social media hate when they broke up. Like people were not on his side at all. And, you know, we're all totally about Claire. And he kind of was like, wait a second, I maybe I have to save my public image and get back together with her. I We have no idea if that is true or not. And I would hate for that to be the case. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It just feels bizarre that they were spotted all over together. And, you know, they knew what was happening. Once the first photos of them came out in Florida, they totally knew. And I'm not saying you should go into hiding, but if you're also going to be making out with your masks on in New York City a few weeks later, you have to know people are going to be talking about it. And if you're going to post anything on Instagram that has any part of the same location, like people are going to put it together. Yeah. So we're not, we're not that, we we know what's going on. The jig is up. (laughs) You have millions of followers and you have them from this show. So expect it. I'm not saying they need to tell us everything. They're probably trying to figure it out, but it just makes me a little nervous that they're playing 
playing coy because I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to end well. I know. I hope it works out for Claire. I really do. All right. Well, could we see another Bachelor Nation love connection? Claire and Tasha's contestant, Bennett Jordan, revealed he has a thing for Kelly Flanagan. Now he wrote on Instagram, at 36, I realized shooters have range for a reason and can't be afraid of taking long distance shots. You just got to keep shooting. However, I didn't realize brief clips of fantasy could give such feels until earlier this week. Now this post was an obvious nod to Kelly, who posted a similar video to her Instagram account just a few days earlier. And she, of course, used the same Mariah Carey track and twirled for the camera to show off her new haircut. I don't know if uh, Kelly's going to go for Bennett, but at least he shoot a shot. I mean, Bennett, we got to respect him for still trying to stay relevant, make sure we don't forget that he is probably one of the only people who has secured his invitation to paradise. <laughs> totally. And Kelly has not shot that down, which is really mm-hmm. interesting. Obviously, we know Peter and Kelly dated for about eight, nine months after his season aired. And he, you know, pulled the plug with Hannah Ann and with Madison and was a free man, reconnected with Kelly. They were together from like April till December mm-hmm. of all of last 2020. And then we found out Kelly did Caitlin Bristow's podcast and she admitted that they did get back together mm-hmm. around January, February when they were at the Super Bowl. Things happened, but they broke up again around Valentine's Day. Yikes. And she also hasn't ruled out like Bachelor in Paradise or Bachelorette though. And Peter has pretty much, I kind of distanced himself a little bit. It's confusing. It really is confusing. And she basically said that like, he, it w- there were just things in their relationship that they just couldn't work out and that they haven't talked, which I thought was interesting too. It's like they have broken off all communication, which is definitely a lot different than what was happening in January and February. Right. So according to Kelly, there was some sort of deal breaker. She didn't say what it was that Peter Peter was struggling to, you know, oblige to, and they, so they totally called it quits. And this time she decided to cut all ties versus the back and forth because he kind of broke up with her and then came back. And their mutual friend, Blake Hortzman, who was uh, with them in the Super Bowl, I recently spoke to him on the Bachelor podcast. And this is what he said when this was all still playing out a few weeks back. Take a look. Let's just say they care a lot about each other and it, it's really hard to like have that public breakup that they had and it's just like a regular relationship you know it's like very rarely do you break up and never talk to that person again never see that person again so i think if you look, step back and look at it like as a normal relationship like of course they're gonna see each other again and they still care about each other you can't just turn that off um now whether they're trying to get back together or not i don't really know too much uh, but they still care for each other, you know, just like any most exes do, especially when they had the, you know, the long relationship like I did. So I would just say, look at it as like a normal relationship. You don't just cut strand and then you just never talk again. You know, most of the time you end up talking again. So that's how I look at it. So, I mean, they were on good terms for a little while, like we said, but I don't know. I don't think that they're going to get back together now. I know that Caitlin Brister podcast was pretty revealing. It's interesting to see who speaks out when on this show, right? And when Mm -hmm. they decide they want to tell everyone everything and who keeps things private and which side of the relationship, which person like kind of starts to spill little dirty little secrets. I I think it's an interesting, I I get both sides. Like I get not wanting to tell people, but I also Mm -hmm. get, you know, Kelly was kind of dragged a little bit for being the one who went back to Peter after everything happened. So I totally get her wanting to share her side of the story. I want more tea. Give me more. I want to know. I mean, I am always tell me everything, but then I'm like, maybe you should keep it a secret. So I'm hypocritical. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to our cringe of the week. And Bachelor Nation star Melissa Rycroft revealed that she was turned down not once, but twice from the Real Housewives of Dallas. I was a little surprised by this. I am too. I love Melissa Rycroft. She is one of my OG Bachelorette, Bachelor favorites. Mm-hmm. I think she... I mean, the Jason Mesnick, the mall, it's just so good. And every, it's, it's, it's classic. It was the first switcheroo. It gave us Jason crying. Mm-hmm. And then they both ended up so happy because Jason and Molly got married. Melissa went back to her um, boyfriend before the show. They all have kids. They're all good. So it all, all is well that ends well, but it was so dramatic. I think she'd be great on Dallas. I think that she would be really good. I think that she would hold her own. We know that she can handle some drama based on what happened on after the final rose. And she's got, you know, she has kids. She's all into like cheerleading and Dallas, you know, Dallas cheerleaders. I think that could be like a fun little element to it too. But I think that she would be a really great addition. I'm I surprised wonder that they passed. Redmond because they were both Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Right. That is fair. Maybe that was the connection. I, I, 
maybe they could bring her on as like a friend to see how it would go. But I think that she'd be great. I do too. I think it's fun that she admitted it too. That's what I also love about Melissa. She is not afraid to, sh like she doesn't shy away from answering those fan Q and A's and she still mm -hmm. very much watches The Bachelor, mm -hmm. isn't afraid to comment on it, have her opinion. She does the same thing with Dancing with the Stars. And it's kind of nice when everyone now is always a little scared to say what they're thinking. Melissa <laughs> pretty much just goes for it and not in a mean way, just in like a, LOL, I wouldn't be surprised if they break up this Bachelor couple or whatever. Totally, exactly. <laughs> um, well, of course, Bachelor in Paradise, right around the corner. Again, we have the Bachelor at first, but Paradise, mm -hmm. we always have it on our minds. And we caught up with some former Bachelor Nation stars recently, mm -hmm. and it made us think about Grant Kemp and Le Lace Morris. I mean, never forget that. Never Texas forget. <laughs> They got engaged in 2016, but ended their engagement shortly after, again, after they got those tattoos in Mexico. Of course. <laughs> and we recently oh, right. with Grant, who told us that he hasn't spoken to Lace since the breakup. Yikes. And they, like, moved in together. She moved out to, I think, Colorado to live with him, or he moved out to Colorado. So after they, they broke up, moved out, no communication whatsoever. I mean, that was one of those couples, like, when they got together on Paradise, we were like, what is happening? Because like, Lace had quite the journey on, I believe, Ben Higgins' season of the show, and she right. was kind of, you know, like a silly character, Lace and then her all and the Grant, time. He, yeah, he seemed to understand her, like, it was, like, kind of sweet, but then it was also, like, this is moving way too fast, unsurprisingly crashed and burned. Yes, I totally forgot about the tattoos. <laughs> oh my god, I could never, they got tattoos that said Grace, which is, like, a couple name, but also, like, obviously, Grace is probably something people get tattooed on them all the time for other reasons. Right. I don't know what the status of their tattoos are now, but we do know that Grant has a girlfriend and is releasing a new song called No More Roses to end oh his time in Bachelor Nation. I can't. I love it. I can't say. But while talking to him, he also kind of gave us some tea because he claimed that producers recently reached out to him for Bachelor in Paradise season seven to see if he was single and interested, which he's not. But that means that the everything's work. They're getting things going behind the scenes. They're getting things going. I can't wait. Well, maybe he'll like make a, a musical guest appearance in Paradise. Oh, oh God. <laughs> he should team up with Chris and Brie from Listen to Your Heart who broke up and we can get a, you know, a real trio there. Oh my God. I can't wait. All right. Well, moving on to our Where Are They Now segment. And we recently caught up with Bachelor Nation Sydney, who revealed why she left the show on Colton Underwood season and gave her thoughts on Colton and Cassie's messy split. Take a look. How soon in filming, do you, if you can even remember, did you know like, all right, I got to get out of here. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to wait to not get the rose. Yeah. I mean, that decision for me to leave actually happened within that night because I didn't pack or anything. I didn't really prepare at all for that, but it was kind of like the the, the best decision in the moment because it just made complete sense. So yeah, you you go around with it and you're like, I'm realistic and I'm like, he doesn't like me like he likes the other girls. Like he's looking at her very differently. So you kind of notice that, but I, I still wanted to be there. I still wanted to try. I still wanted to like push myself and him. So every time I, I got my chance with him, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to really work myself up. And we're going to talk about this today. And every time I just felt like very surface level with the way our relationship was going and just not really getting the depth that I needed. So I had gotten to my wits end at that point. I remember being like very like dramatic and just like kind of, going through my emotions a lot those last few days. And I was like, okay, I'm at my end. This is my like last go at this. I'm going to push one more time, see if he gives me the answers and like can prove to me that he could do this for me. Cause that, that's where I'm at. And it's also in the back of your head. You're like, could I bring this man home to my family? And the answer for me was no way. Like that would have been <laughs> the first guy my parents had ever met. And they, I would have been like, I don't really know this guy at all, but here, here are my parents. So yeah, it was like no way for me, but I, that was my like last shot at it. And he gave me the same type of like nice answer and it wasn't what I needed. So I was like, yeah, I gotta go. That's, I yeah, feel like do this. I might be remembering it wrong, but I feel like Colton kind of had a record number of women leaving on their own accord. I think he had the most. <laughs> yeah. Was that just because he was so obviously into Cassie or... Do you have yeah. any idea why that was? You could definitely see that he had some favorites for sure. Um, and I felt he is very conscious of like how he's going to be portrayed, which is a great thing to do as Aaliyah. Like you're protecting yourself in a way. And I think because of that, a lot of the relationships didn't move forward because he was just being so like cognizant of that. Um, so then, yeah, people left for their own reasons. But I think that had a lot to do with it for sure. Um, obviously without getting too much into the nitty gritty, cause it's not, neither of us know really, but were you shocked by the way Colt and Cassie's relationship kind of played out? I was sad to see that happen. Cause I, I think both of them individually are great people. And I think that I, I always, like I said, I love a happy ending and I love to see like love happen. I just think that it 
maybe they outgrew their relationship and it was a great, I, I think both of them were very like new to love in a lot of ways. And I think that's, was a great love for what it was, but because of that, it, it wasn't lasting. Um, so yeah, it was sad for me to see, but I, I can't say I was necessarily like shocked by them ending, but it was still sad. Yeah. So she kind of g- gave you some dirt as well. I know it's kind of fun to talk to people who maybe didn't have like the biggest arc on the show, but you go back and you look and she, it reminded me how many people quit Colton's season and she was one of them. And when they all left, they all kept warning him about like the girls are not there for the right reasons. And then watching how everything played out, which Sydney kind of hinted at, like I wasn't wrong. And I was like, Ooh, like interesting. Very interesting. But it's so true though. Like, I guess if you're a contestant on the show and you see that the lead is, has favorites, like, you're like, why am I wasting my time? I don't need to be here anymore. I can go back to my real life and look for somebody else. So I totally get why they would leave. But, um, and then she also spoke about their, you know, Colton and Cassie's mess, messy split. You know, there's a whole, that it's a whole another level of messy split. So, um, and we, they both haven't really spoken out about it in a, quite some time. And Colton has been very, very silent on social media since all this happened with the restraining orders and things like that. Yeah, Cassie has kind of started a YouTube channel and has gotten a little bit into posting, but not about anything personal very much, like makeup yeah. and school, and Colton has been quiet. It's also with Sydney, it remi- it makes me think like, it, it's just when the leads aren't saying what their actions are reflecting. So he was talking about how he wanted a wife and saying all the things the Bachelor's supposed to say, but really he, he wanted a girlfriend, someone younger like Cassie, whatever, which is mm-hmm. totally fine, but that's when you can kind of see it's like your words are not matching your actions. Yeah. So then that's why I think so many girls quit his season. Because yeah. he was saying he was ready for this, but he clearly wasn't. He was willing to risk it all for someone who didn't even want to be dating him, let alone his <laughs> That's so true. That was a messy season. It was a messy, messy season. Definitely was. Well, Sarah, it was great to recap all things Bachelor again. I mean, just when we think there's nothing happening, we just covered so many different seasons, people, years. We spanned Bachelor history right there. We we, we really did. We covered it all. And we're going to do it each and every week. So make sure to check back on Us Weekly's YouTube channel every Tuesday. And make sure to listen to Sarah's podcast here for the right reasons. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.